Okay, guys, we're going to cut this uh, off here and call that part one. I've uh, got a few more things we need to do on this. We've got it operating and it's playing, but we've got some, uh, we've got some other issues we need to deal with on this radio. And uh, so we're going to pick that up in part two. Uh, I ought to have that edited and out pretty soon. And uh, up until then, appreciate you guys watching. And until part two, see you then. Bye. I've got a little bit of a problem with the tuning. Uh, I noticed when I first started working on this, the tuning would work pretty well in all directions. But now it kind of, well, it seems to be working okay now. But it was giving me difficulty going back to the left. And one of the other things I want to comment on, and this is just kind of a thing with me, is when I turn the dial this way, the, the, the knob, it seems like to me that this should move up, right? But instead it moves in the opposite direction. And this reminds me of some work that I'd done on a, on a radio earlier where the, uh, it was an RCA, where this had been restrung and it was restrung backwards. Um, this one may be strung the way it was originally, but uh, I think it acts backwards. So I'm thinking about changing the way that is anyway. So let me show you something else about this. I may have to go mobile on here for me to show you this. Let me see if you can see that. Yeah, let me just zoom in and see if you can see what I'm looking at. Hold on. Okay, so what you're looking at is here's where the string is wrapped around the uh, knob for the tuning. And you'll see that the string comes off and it passes through a port that goes up to the pulley that moves the uh, variable capacitor back and forth. And there's another string that comes back through here you can't see. And the thing that you may notice is, is that this string is actually rubbing up against that edge. And actually this likewise, this one is too on the bottom edge. If this was reversed around the other way where this would be turning, you know, if you turn this clockwise, the main dial would turn clockwise. Then this string would be coming off the top of this barrel. And I would think it would go right through the middle of this window and not rub on the edge. And likewise, this one would come off the top of the barrel instead of on the bottom, and it would also pass through the middle in there. So I'm thinking that this has been strung incorrectly. Uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to flip this back down. I'm going to lubricate the capacitor and so forth. But uh, I think what I may try to do is pull this clip out here and undo this, pull the knob out, and then try to rewrap it uh, with the string going the opposite direction without having to restring this set. I may be able to do that. Um, the trick is, is if I have to redo the string and the spring, is I'd have to take the dial off to get the face off. And I think this dial is not going to want to come off. I think if I try to pull that off, it might break. So uh, I'm going to try to do this without risking pulling this off. So I'm going to see if I can do this, um, and we'll just see how it goes. Doing this where you can get a better look at it. So here you can see the way that string goes off this barrel from the knob, and it's rubbing against the top of this slot. So like I say, if this comes up, if this were to come up and come across the top, it would go more in the middle of this window and not be rubbing against right here. And that's actually going on here too. It's actually rubbing against the bottom of that window instead of being more up. So I think this string is meant to come off the top of this barrel on both sides and not drag. And then we do that then this knob, if you turn this clockwise, then this dial will move clockwise. Right now it does the opposite. If I go clockwise, the dial wants to go counterclockwise, and I just think that's annoying. Uh, so, I'm going to see if I can disconnect this and wrap this around the other way. So, wish me luck. This could be pretty messy here. So let's see, it looks like it's got three wraps, which is typical. Let's see if we can just ease this out. Yeah. 
and I may have a spring fighting me here. I think I'm doing this right. Now nobody panic. <laughs> okay. All right. Now while I got this out, I'm going to clean this up so that I can lubricate this. It's in pretty rough shape, so. You get this cleaned up, and then uh, we'll get back to uh, see if we can wrap it around the opposite direction. Okay, so we got this polished up. I just uh, put it in a drill motor and spun it with a Scotch Brite just to get all the crud off of it and so forth. So here we go. I'm going to put it back through here. I'll lubricate it after I get the string on. So the string is like this. And so I think what I need to do is see if I can uncurl it because it's going to want to wrap the opposite direction now and I believe the part that's closest to this face is the one that goes inside and I want it to come across the top not underneath so what I'm going to do is bring this in like this and I'm going to bring that across the top like that instead of underneath which is the way it was okay and now the trick is to see if I can wrap it around this may take some patience the problem is it still wants to curl up it's been in that shape a long time so it's got kind of a memory do you wish I would just say, uh, let me get this done and I'll bring it right back? Maybe, huh? Well, it's part of what I do here is I try to show you what it's like to do this. You might look at this and think, man, I would never do that. And then you might watch me do it and think, well, gosh, if he can do it, I can do it. speak too quickly though I might not be able to do it <laughs> oh, come on man okay so we got one wrap done huh I got to tell you, I have a bad feeling about this. I think I'm going to have to take it off the main dial. I say, I think the twisting it is probably not the right way to go. Because I'm just making it into a mess. I'm not really afraid of breaking the string. I've I've done stringing so many times. It's not a big deal. I'm just trying to save the hassle of removing the dial. Okay. You see what's going on on top. Now you've already come off the pulley. Yep, yeah, I've come off the pulley. I thought I had too much slack. Okay. Let me get you down where you can see what's... You can watch the nightmare unfold. Yeah, we got a problem. Okay, I'm going to see if I can finish the wrapping on the string and see if I can gauge it on the pulley. So it looks like three wraps on here is about right. If I had any more on there, I don't think it would fit. So I'm going to say that's, that's right. We'll just see how it goes. Put the clip on. 
Clips back on. Alright, let's go address the other side. This isn't too easy here. I'm going to have to do it without you being able to see because i got to get my head in there. I'll pause you and bring you back. Well, there through the magic of editing, I've made this look like this really went smoothly. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I spent hours on this last night. I just couldn't get my fingers in there. I had to take the, uh, the mixer tube out and disconnect the light so I could get in here, but I was still doing it with, you know, puppet rods, <laughs> trying to get in there. And at the end of the day, it came down to getting the right length of string. Uh, the, the string came undone from the spring. It didn't break, but it came undone. And that was actually a good thing because then I could get the string straightened back out and then I adjusted the tightness to where I've got it just right. It took a lot of trial and error to be honest. So uh, I worked on this quite, quite late last night and into this morning and uh, this is the next day and I just needed fresh eyes and, and got after this and it's, it's now on there. So it works like it should. So turn it this way and the dial goes the direction you're turning the knob and that's the way I think it should be so there we go we got that working so now I need to put these uh, get back on to work on the top I'll clean it off a little bit I'm not going to clear the deck and, and do it this is not a restoration okay um, you know if we look at the bottom of this let me put this back up where we can look at the the wiring let me get you adjusted here. Okay, so I did replace a cracked wire that was here that was kind of melting onto this screw that's part of the uh, <coughs> tuning condenser <coughs> mounting screw. And I replaced this wire here because of the cracking and, and I was just concerned it was going to short, short through there. Now, there are other wires in here that show signs of cracking. They haven't, it hasn't crumbled off yet. If I pick at it, it doesn't want to crumble. Uh, so, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this for now. This is not a restoration or a refurbishment. This is a repair, and I've done a few things to make it safer and, and make it work right. But for a total refurbishment on this, all this wiring probably needs to be redone. Uh, if you want to see that done, I'm going to send you to go see Jim Burns. That man does some amazing restorations on all kinds of radios. He does a lot of zeniths. And he tears these things down to the component level and replaces the wiring when it's necessary. And he just does an outstanding job. So if you want to see, you know, some refurbishment and restoration work on chassis that go all the way down to stripping it down and all of that, he does a great job. And so does Buzz, okay? Uh, but go check him out and... Uh, I may do that someday on this one. My, my main uh, uh, goal on this was to get this thing working and see how it performs. If I later decide that you know I want to make this thing a real, you know, put a lot more work into this, I may go back and redo this at a later date. I'm not going to do it today. All right, so getting back to the top side, I'm going to clean this thing up, put the tube back in. I'll probably clean the tubes up and uh, we'll see how this thing works and then we'll check out the alignment. Okay, so I got the top cleaned up just a little bit. It didn't go crazy for sure. Uh, cleaned up the tubes. They look really nice and put them on the tube tester. Uh, it's nice to see the six tubes here. Four of them are Zeniths, and I think they're originals. Uh, and they all tested okay. Some of them are really strong. They all tested fine. I didn't have to replace any of them. Uh, so you got your RF amp. You've got your uh, mixer and uh, oscillator tube. You've got your uh, IF tube your uh, detector AVC first audio and you've got this is interesting you've got your rectifier and your audio output tube now you're not Zenith's okay and there's a 35L6 it tests fine here was something that was interesting was the rectifier it is a 35Z5 the tube socket has the nice lettering on it to tell you what goes in there it says a 35Z5 that's not what was in there. What a time to find out, huh? This is what was in there, and it's a 35Z4. Now, it seems to have worked fine. <laughs> 
I pulled out my little Sam's tube substitute book. Can you do this substitution? No. <laughs> well, it seems to work. And uh, I didn't see anything funny about the way the wiring is done underneath, like somebody had rewired something to fit this tube. It looks like it's the same pinouts. Uh, so anyway, I put in a uh, 3.5 Z5, and we're going to see how it works. So we're going to bring this thing up a little bit slow because of that, and we'll see how it does. I guess I'll go ahead and pop it up. All right, let's see how we do. Down, look up the power. And here we go. 120 volts, 115 volts. Hey, it's Craig Asher. 481-894-7540. Securing America. Okay, I think it's working pretty good. Uh, I'm going to double check the voltages just because I got that other rectifier in there. But then the uh, next thing we'll come back to is we'll start looking at the alignment. Okay, so I'm setting up to do the uh, alignment. And one of the first things you do is you set up the IF frequency and you pump it in. And I was trying to hook it up to go through like a coil to go into this, the uh, uh, antenna here. And I just couldn't pick this thing up. And I've got my uh, modulation turned up pretty loud, and, and it's on right now, and you can't hear it. And I thought, what am I doing wrong here? And I got to look at this, and I forgot about the wave trap. Now, in the instructions, it talks about, you know, to minimize the 455 through the wave trap. And I thought, well, maybe I need to do is open the wave trap up so I can hear it. So I gave that a try, and I'll show you what that does. So the wave trap adjustment is right here on the front. Let's get back into focus here. Focus. What happened to the focus? Okay, so I don't know what's wrong with my, my uh, camera here. I have had to reboot it, but basically the idea is, is that I'm not getting the 455 IF frequency through the front end, and it occurred to me that maybe that, I, that uh, wave trap, which is right here, is blocking the 455, which is what it's supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is detune this off 455 to see if it'll let it go through. Let me try to go after it right in here. Okay. How about that? So the wave trap was blocking the IF frequency of 455 from getting in through the antenna. And I was having the same thing if I connected up to the uh, grid cap of the uh, RF stage. I was doing that with uh, through a capacitor. But I like this better just not even be connected. So anyway, there we go. If I turn it back, I can null out that 455. That wave trap is doing its job. Let me get it off of, off there so it will let it through. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go through and do the alignment. Let me adjust my levels. So you want a low level in so you don't have the uh, automatic uh, volume control kick in and cause some strange things to happen. Okay. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go in and do adjustments, probably starting from the detector and working your way backwards, A, B, C, D. And that is, does it show it here? It doesn't show it, but oh yeah, there it is, A, B, C, D. Well, I'm going to go from here and work my way backwards. I'm going to start at the detector and work my way back. So let's see, that'll be this one. Okay, that's pretty close. That one's right on. 
Okay, I'll now work my one on the other side to the first the first I have can. Quite a bit of change. Turn the little bubble down. And the last one. Check them again. Turn the level down again. there. Okay, we're going to see if she still receives. <laughs> you never know. Time to go over to Kinder, Louisiana. How's that sound? Everything they've got right there in Cachata. It's a resort casino. That's what Obama wanted to enforce. He actually was allowing to go on in his administration under the cover of the Biden family. Congress has approved more than $113 billion in aid. Biden's expected to ask. Okay, I think that's outstanding. Okay, we're going to go to uh, 1600, which is at the top of the game fully open. Switch the frequency on the frequency counter to 1600. Pardon my arm. It says to go to 1.6 megahertz. I'm adjusting my frequency counter right here. I've shown it several times. I'm picking up a station. It's uh, Vietnamese. It's not on 1600, I don't think, but we'll see. Okay, uh, turn the I'm gonna turn this back on. There's the modulation. So it's pretty close. Let's see if I can adjust it any. Yes, I can. there. Okay, now go to uh, adjust the antenna. We do that at, let's, let's go to 1400. I actually prefer to go to 1400. I actually prefer to go to a uh, weak station and do it that way. We'll see if we're close here. Modulation on. Go to 1400. And this one is deals where you kind of you adjust this, but you rock the tuner at the same time. Okay, and then the antenna trimmer is here. Turn that down. That's about as low as I can get that.
It's right in there. I'm gonna see if I can find a weak station. All the stations I normally count on and doing this are coming in strong. <laughs> Okay, it's kind of a weak station there. I'm seeing if I can do any better by bringing it in. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now what we need to do is go back and shut the wave trap down. So I'm going to go back to 455. Sorry for keep putting the wrong arm in the way. So now I'm going to do is null the, uh, you know, use the wave trap to shut down 455 coming in. Okay, so there we have 455 coming in. And let's just see if we can minimize it. There we go. All right, let's see how she performs, huh? It's daytime, we're in the shop. It's hard to pick up stuff. percent of his at bats are bad at bats. Is that something that you have coined yourself or is there is there numbers? Did you did you oh, no, you know I didn't look at I think this thing is performing great. Um, we'll look at putting the uh, handle back on the chassis and uh, we'll see what we do then. They covered up things. Okay, I've had this playing for a couple of days. Uh, sat up real late with it last night, uh, listening to DX. It was amazing. I, uh, if you don't know, I'm, I live kind of, I'm, I'm in the outskirts, but I live near Houston. And I was picking up Tulsa. <laughs> That's kind of unheard of, particularly inside of my my shop, my garage here. Uh, so I was pretty, uh, pretty amazed. I've been able to pick up Shreveport with it before, but now I've picked up Tulsa. So there you go. Um, what I just got through doing is I got through cleaning up and waxing the case. Back this out of the way. I put up a couple of pictures of the progress as I was doing this. I saved you the pain of watching me polish. But uh, I showed like a what it looked like on one half and the other half hadn't been done yet. And uh, looks really nice and you can kind of see some of the the grain in places too you can't really see it in here it's too dark but if I take this outside you'll be able to see it the louvers are a pain in the neck to do uh, but I was able to get in there with uh, cotton swabs and, and get all that taken care of so got the handle cleaned and back on I didn't polish the brass up left it uh, left it like it was and uh, there we go so I think this looks pretty darn good all right, so we're getting ready close to go back into the case. Uh, that leaves next this. So I've tried cleaning this, and it's yellow and it's staying yellowed. Uh, it's, it was punched in, I guess. I don't know if it punched physically, but it had crinkled and had kind of collapsed in the middle. I used a heat gun and, and tried to shape that back out. It did go out and stayed out, but it's not exactly equal, as you can see. Uh, so... I've decided to do something different about this because I think this dial, I think this dial looks really nice and I just don't want to kill it like that. So 
So step in dialcover.com. So from Mark, I got a, a new dial cover. He makes these, and I've had a couple of his made before, and you're witnessing the peeling open. So, does that look about right? I think it looks nicer. What do you think? Right, so this will go in. Like this. Let me get this in and I'll bring you back. I gotta install some clips. Okay, so we got the uh, the new dial cover in. I think that looks awesome. Needed to just do a little bit of trimming on the edge, which is very easy to do. I just marked it with a sharpie where I needed to do it and trimmed it with some scissors, just to have a little bit of clearance by where these little whatever those are bumps are related to the louvers in the front. A little bit there, a little bit here. Just trimmed it off a little bit with scissors, and it fell right in, and the uh, snaps are back on, and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm ready to test fit the case back into here. I've got one remaining concern, I think. Zoom you in here. So I'm not sure about the pointer. Now you can see that the pointer is warped. From whatever it is, it happens to these plastics. I had to glue one of these back together. If you remember, I crushed it. Now you look at the way that pointer is. Rock and roll, huh? So uh, my concern is is that it's going to touch the inside of the dial cover and if recollection serves me it seems like I had a concern about that with this one now it may have made, been worse because this one was popped in I don't know but it'll be with the pointer in the up and down position like right there is where it has the clearance so if that ends up being the case I got a couple of options maybe instead of worrying about it we'll just see what happens but one of them is is that I could maybe trim the tips off because I don't really need it to be as long as it is, see? I mean, it could go back to back in here somewhere. So I could possibly do that. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about doing is trying to get it off. And then maybe I could use some heat and bend it back. I thought about trying to heat it in situ, but I'm afraid it'll damage the paint on here. I, don't, I just don't want to risk it. The dye looks so nice. The other possibility is to slip it off. It's got a metal band that clamps down. I don't really have a way to get leverage in there to pry it off. I've looked at releasing the set screw that's on the pulley and all that does is allow the pulley to move around independent of the condenser shaft that the, that the pointer is attached to. So I could maybe try to go in here and try to work this off. I think the problem is, is that it's held in the center. I think it's just gonna break right around here what thing's going to happen. So worst case, if that happens, there are people who make uh, 3D printed replacements of these. Um, those are kind of my options. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it'll work like it is um, and then we'll see. nice okay so I've kind of pulled it in snug the question is, is it going to touch this end my here might touch at the bottom let's see We're going to watch top and bottom, don't I? You get a clearance here. Looks okay. Oh yeah. 
it's okay. It's okay. That's great news. I'm going to pull this back out. I'm going to dust the top of that uh, dial cover right there, of uh, the dial. Uh, it's got dust on it and because uh, it shows. You get that done, I'll pop it back in here and we'll put the case screws in. I'm getting excited. Looks good. Pretty snazzy. All right, put the screws in the bottom and we'll see how it works. Okay, so we got the chassis screwed back in. I think the new uh, dial cover looks terrific. I'm very glad I uh, sprung for that. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I put the uh, old knobs back on because they'll go. They look terrible, uh, but they're original. There's, op there's options with that. Um, I may go to renovated radios and get some replacements. Uh, he does good work. And uh, the uh, you know the radio turned out looking so nice and it performed so well. I think it would be worth spending it on. I did this and I mean the cover. I'm glad the needle the pointer worked out okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, I was able to 3D print replacements of this. Uh, these are in a kind of a linen color. If you can see them, they've got the Zenith logo on the top. They look pretty nice. Uh, but the model that's there is the small hole. They didn't have the quarter inch hole. Uh, I could maybe try to go into the file and modify it to put the right size uh, hole in it. But, you know, heck, I think that uh, uh, Renovated Radio's version will look uh, look nicer. And it probably match the uh, a pointer better. I also have a back on order to replace. Uh, put a replacement back on here. Uh, so this thing will look really nice when it's completed, but meanwhile, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, turn this thing on. I think I'm ready to take it off the leash, off the uh, power supply, and we'll just plug this thing in and see how it does. Going in hot. I think I saw the dial light come up and fade out. I did check the differences between the 35Z5 and the 35Z4. There is a difference. Uh, the Z4 does not have the tap on the heaters. So it probably had a few different voltages. I don't know how much of a difference it made, but uh, this is the way it's designed to be. So we'll see how it works out. Water policy changes. And we actually... Do you see how it's currently playing in the Rent those extra rooms. Cristiano Nato, prosecutors with special counsel Jack Smith's office, January 2nd. Five. Orioles beat the Astros five to four. That's Shreveport again. It's got incredible sensitivity. And I think the selectivity is there. You just have to kind of work at it. I mean, that's, look at the selectivity. Those are probably off by, what do you think, 10 kilohertz? Anyway, in case you're wondering which wax I used on this, I used a wax I've seen Dawn on Restor Restoral Radios use. I'd pick this up to see what it was like, and I gave a little try of it on this, and it seems to work really well. So thanks, Dawn. Television as well. Within a few years, Sports Illustrated was profitable. Okay, so we got it working pretty good. What do you want to do next? 
Well, we received something in the mail from our friends at Everything Radio. And let's see what we have here. How's that? Now, you guys know I don't normally do this kind of work. I usually get them working and and that's enough. But I thought this one looked really cool. Once I did the uh, the dial cover on the front, I thought, ah, you know, make it look nice. What do we got here? I'll put the link to the company that makes these in the description for you. But, I mean, you might as well do it, right? Look at this. It looks awesome. I believe it's uh, CNC laser cut. I got these little, I got three of the four. And hopefully this will go in. It's a perfect fit, man. have three of these so I have to use one of those t-shaped ones I have some of those around here somewhere I'll put it in there when I get a chance all right I think that looks awesome fire in in Hawaii three and a half billion they're saying you know that, that um that people are saying well they should have warned us it was happening according to the news reports at least and whether it's fake news or real news I don't really care uh, I'm going to take it for what it's worth but they're saying the fire is moving a mile a minute 60 miles an hour the, the, the it was a hurricane it was a hurricane and a fire at the same time and that a lot of the uh cell towers and stuff melted and got blown away and so they could not activate the emergency system was moving at a mile a minute that's incredible here's the fix be back 97 miles per hour Astros in the road gray uniforms, and it's the black tops with the white pants. Okay, guys, here we are out at the park with another finished project. I really enjoyed working on this 1940 Zenith. I know earlier on I said it was 41, but it's from 1940. It says so plainly on the schematic. Anyway, this has been a nice little uh, tabletop, I guess you say, or quasi-portable. It doesn't have batteries that go inside of it. It's, it's fully uh, AC operating, and uh, we went through our usual process on this. We went through and did a diagnosis, found that it primarily just had problems with the uh, um, electrolytic capacitors in terms of the electronics. Uh, the tubes were all okay. I did change one because it had the wrong rectifier in it. Um, but we went through and did the necessary things in terms of putting a polarized plug in and the safety capacitors and, and rewiring it to where we controlled where the hot went and so forth. And we did all that that we needed to do. Uh, the biggest thing I found was the biggest problem was the way the tuning worked. It worked opposite to what you see me doing here. Here I'm turning it counterclockwise and the dial is moving counterclockwise. I just think that's the way it ought to be. Uh, as we looked in this it was operating the opposite and saw where it was dragging in certain areas. So we corrected that and it turned out to be a, a lot of trouble. I know I said that I don't mind doing restringing and I don't. It's not like I'll avoid it at all cost, but it is a pain in the neck. In this case it was. Not always. Anyway, so we went through and did all of that, and uh, it's working pretty good. The speaker was starting to split out and was doing pretty bad. We got that all taken care of. I think it looks good. I still have the hole in one side, but I've, I've glued all the way around it to keep it from doing anything else. Uh, so I think it's going to be okay. Now, the next question is, is, do you think I'll ever revisit this radio? Well, I might, and I'll tell you why. Uh, what does it need revisiting for? we got an airplane about to come over. We'll see if I need to stop talking. Um, the speaker maybe I'll go ahead and fix that hole when I go back into this in terms of the chassis uh, this did have some of the infamous rubber wiring in it that does become hard and then brittle and then flake off uh, it had gotten it has gotten largely to the hard mode you know phase in several of them some of them are fine um, in terms of cracking and falling off it really hadn't gotten to that stage yet the power cord did but the the other uh, wires in here were not to that stage. I did replace one that was having some kind of problem being next to a screw and I got it changed. Uh, but eventually I probably will need to go in here and do a full electrical restoration where I replace all the wiring. Um, the 
hesitation on that is I'll need to pull the IF transformers out and go in there and, and change the wire all the way into there. I'm not afraid to do that. It's just going to take time to do. And I, before I went to that much effort on this, I wanted to see if this is going to be wor a worthy project to spend that much time on. I just don't, you know, don't do full restorations, as I've said before. But I think this one turned out looking pretty good. Uh, the cabinet was in very good shape. I've got it here in the sun, so maybe you can see a little bit of the figuring. Um, I got a new back on it. I think this looks terrific. Uh, the handle's in fine shape. I left the brass uh, tarnished, or, or what do you want to call it, patina. Um, and the new dial cover, I think, looks really good. I've still got the original knobs on here. Uh, I may be changing these out before too long because of the way the rest of the project turned out. Uh, normally, I'd just leave it. But uh, I, may, I may do something about that. All right, so uh, why don't we do the next step, which is going to do a quick band scan, and then I'm going to show you something I did last night. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Or it's on already. Turn the volume up. Everybody out there winning is such a huge focus. Okay. That's all I care about. That's what American play That's actually about. College I Station. That's uh, actually, so I think it's about 40 I or 50 miles from here. I'll put a note. I don't normally pick this up. A recent project I mentioned, normally sometimes you can pick up College Station. In this case, we're, we're getting it. So, so let's turn it around and, and ask. That might be San Antonio. All these individuals with uh, the church since 1965. Are you ready to get up and follow down? I hope you're noticing today. just the, the number of stations that are in here. I can pause on them and let them come in. Representing themselves. So everything. Pointed out the selectivity before. Playing that selectivity right there. On the spot, even if you don't buy from us. Hey, a strategic move by Trump if you go back and remember when he made that pick she basically left and uh matter of fact she was in Brooklyn she was in Manhattan and then she found out it was a little cheaper call today and get 50 Viagra pills for only $99 this could cost as much Oh, you can't do that to me. You can't do that to me. I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> 6'10". I normally can't pick that up in the house. I think that might be Austin. Okay, so that was kind of a run through out here. It's, uh, it's about 11.15 in the morning. Um, you know obviously you can pick up better in the evening so last night I did some uh, late night DXing <laughs> if you will uh, just listening I should say and uh, I've got a couple of clips to show you of some of the things I picked up last night in my garage okay which as you know has very poor reception and without the external antenna just the way it is with the wave magnet in the box so let's take a look at that right now and he offered free battery testing and charging whenever you need it. Get the parts and help you need to get the job done right at AutoZone. Restrictions apply. CWK, Report, Bossier City, 11.30 The Tiger, your home for LSU sports. 11.30 The Tiger, your home for LSU sports. 
This is KRLD ten eighty uh, Garland, which is outside Dallas. ClassicChevrolet.com, WBAP, first traffic and weather. On the one. WBAP 820 is in Fort Worth. I'm not tracking perfectly here. It doesn't have a pattern. So I lined it up over here for the alignment instructions, but it doesn't have a pattern for, for doing the uh, tracking. So I had a lot of fun doing that. You know, a lot of the radios I've been working on have not really been configured for, you know, that kind of, of fun evening sitting out listening to, uh, to uh, stations coming in in the garage. Um, I do sometimes put up a long wire antenna temporarily, or maybe it's a random length antenna. I don't transmit with it. Uh, out, out at my yard and um, sit outside, but it's just been too, too many mosquitoes. I prefer to do that in cold weather. Um, but anyway, as you can see, this thing is performing really, really well. And uh, who knows, maybe someday I'll come back and revisit this thing uh, and do a, you know, electrical restoration on it because it performs so really, really well. I've really enjoyed working on the Zenith. It's been really interesting. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching and kind comments and so forth. And until the next project, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.